الحمد للہ وحدہ والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبی بعد اما بعد انشاءاللہ تعالی we we'll start with second part of discussion around surah yusuf let's start with few questions again so how old was yusuf alayhi salam when his brothers threw him in the well how many days did yusuf alayhi salam spend in the well Which brother tried to save Yusuf alayhi salam from being killed? Who helped and converted Yusuf alayhi salam in the well? Where was the caravan coming from for trade when they came around to the well for in the search of water? And how many dirhams was Yusuf alayhi salam sold for? Let's keep those questions in your mind and we go through them inshallah ta'ala. Okay, let's start. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa kathalika yajtabika rabbuka wa yuallimuka min ta'wil al-ahadithi wa yutimmu ni'matahu alayka wa ala ali ya'quba kama atammaha ala abawayka min qablu Ibrahim wa Ishaq in rabbaka alimun hakim Thus will your Lord choose you and teach you Yusuf alayhi salam the interpretation of dreams and other things and perfect his favor on you and on the offspring of Yaqub as he perfected it on your forefathers Ibrahim السلام, and Ishaq السلام. verily your Lord is all knowing, all wise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help Yusuf السلام, with knowledge and also with the interpretation of the dreams so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this as a blessing, meaning if someone knows how to interpret de- dreams, this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors his servants, his slaves, those who live their lives in accordance with the command of Allah and his messenger. Those who choose and opt to follow the way of Allah are the blessed souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would always favor them. Even if outwardly and apparently it seems that they are in trouble, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be on their side. It doesn't have to be a material favor. Sometimes you see someone being in trouble and you see, oh, he's in trouble, he's diseased, he's got problem, he hasn't got much wealth. He's been thrown in well, he's been thrown in fire, he's been thrown in the valley and boycotted for three years. But that is not the be all and the end all. So outwardly or worldly troubles could not necessarily or does not necessarily mean a pro- problem per se. Rather, there may be a bigger favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the favor of a spiritual nature, which is the favor of life hereafter and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَآتَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً we gave Ibrahim alayhi salam the goodness of this world as well and what was that? Ibrahim alayhi salam only had few people believing in him Ibrahim alayhi salam had to leave his city to migrate elsewhere his father didn't believe him. People didn't believe him. He was thrown in the fire. He had to leave his children, his young son and wife, in the bewilderment and in the desert. He had to then slaughter his son. So he has gone through a lot of trials and tribulation, and only few people believed in him and accepted him as a prophet. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
we have given him the blessings of this world as well. So it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the true reality. The reality of the blessings or the favors or the goodness. The goodness does not mean material goodness. Does not necessarily mean what we consider good. Special food, special clothing, special gadgets, special cars, house, travel. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favors for the life hereafter or even the material world in this material world the favors mean that you would get a spiritual upliftment you get the joy of being loved and favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so your heart is contented with whatever little and meager you have whatever little you have you stay happy with that you stay contented with that so one has to be very clear about that material gain does not mean the true favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It may mean, that is why Yusuf al Islam ultimately became the king. So he had material gains as well. But the true gain is when you are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to Allah's obedience. When you obey Allah and you get tranquility in your heart, that is the true blessing in this world rather than material one, which may or may not be a true blessing. So keep that in mind, inshallah ta'ala. And then in Tafsir Qurtabi, the dream that Sayyidina Yusuf had, it was materialized after how many years? That was one of the question I forgot to put in there. 40 years. After 40 years, the dream of 11 stars, sun, and moon are bowing down and prostrating to Yusuf Islam. It took 40 years to materialize. Means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would keep things for future as well. Sometimes your du'as are not accepted now. Don't worry. You continue to make du'a. They will be accepted at the right time. Whenever there is more of a need for that du'a to be accepted. Allah knows better and best for you. So Allah always does good for you. So don't worry about that. So the interpretation does not need to be materialized straight away. Rather, it could do that. It could manifest in the future. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتُ لِلسَّائِلِينَ Indeed, in the story of Yusuf salam and his brother, there is, in their lives, there, is, there are many lessons, there are many ayat, many signs, many revelations for those who ask. Means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to explain the whole story and yet there will be many benefits to learn from and we inshallah ta'ala uh, discuss some of those benefits inshallah ta'ala then Allah says إِذْ قَالُوا لَيُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ أَحَبُّ إِلَىٰ أَبِيْنَا مِنَّا وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَةِ إِنَّ أَبَانَا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينَ When they said, the brothers said among themselves, truly, Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother Benjamin, they are more loved by Allah, by our father. So our father loves them and favors them more over us. And the reality is, we are usba. We are a strong group. We are, so usba literally means a group of five to ten men. So we are five to ten strong, you know, family members who could really benefit our fathers better. We do actually benefit our fathers more than Yusuf and Benjamin because they are very small. They are only very young. And yet our father loves love them more than he loves us. Although we are more materially beneficial to them. We can do all the household work. We do that. We graze the animal and sheep. We are the one who bring in wealth and money and everything else. We are the one who protect our families and house. We build houses. So we are there to help them. And yet, Yaqub alayhi salam, our father, has actually opted to favor two young boys over us. We need to think about that, perhaps. And they said that. They were so rude. They said, our father is in plain error. Our father doesn't know. And that is at most disrespect showing to one's father. We need to learn this, you know, my friends, that we have to respect our parents, our elders. Those who do not respect their parents and elders would be deprived of many blessings in this dunya and in the life hereafter. So one has to have a lot of respect and adab. And this, this group of people, this group of 10 
brothers, they didn't have, they, those ten sons didn't have respect for their father. And they're saying, oh father, perhaps you don't understand. And the father is actually a prophet. He's not a common man, he's a prophet. So this is what happens when you do not respect others. You actually get blinded by your whims and desire. And you start saying rude words, rude things against your father, against your mother, against your elders. That's very, very bad. We need to learn and improve. Now the brother said, we are stronger. We are usba. We are powerful. Our father should love us better. What, what was that? What was the reason behind that? Because they thought they had the right. Because they're stronger, they do a lot of household work. They deserve that respect, that extra care, not the small to young boys. So that's the concept of having personal right, my right, I deserve, I own, my choice. This is all from shaitan. We do not own anything. We do not deserve anything. Everything is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us life? Did we do anything to deserve to be born? Not at all. Did we do anything special to be created as human being? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not choose us or decide that we will be animal for example or stone or tree why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us into human being what did we do to deserve that nothing we didn't do anything this is sheer mercy pure mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we should be extremely grateful for that and not demanding anything there's no right that we owe we have nothing we, we, that we deserve we are in complete debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we do not deserve anything rather everything is from Allah's mercy and favor Allah's blessing so to asking to, to ask for my right I deserve this is all from shaitan it's a sign of arrogance that is why shaitan what did he do he said Ana khayrum min. I am better than Adam salam. I deserve to be given this title of vicegerent not Adam alayhi salam. And this is a sign of arrogance. One should be extremely clear. And when you feel that way, when you start thinking about your right, it leads you to jealousy. It leads you to think, oh, I was more rightful of that particular favor. Why Allah or why someone else opted or chosen someone else? I was never given this opportunity. Why was he given this? I was never given this favor. Why this man is being given this favor? You start getting jealousy. And jealousy could lead up to many haram things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sharia teaches us that we should be more focused on our responsibilities. Because the right that someone owes, someone else is, someone else is become responsible for that. So my right is your responsibility. Your right is my responsibility. So Sharia teaches us that we focus on responsibilities, not right. Not right. I give you a small example of that. Imagine there are four people in the room and they have a big, you know, uh, piece of uh, a loaf of bread. And you can make this big loaf, this big naan, into four parts. Now, if every one of us start thinking and saying that, you know what, I deserve this. This is my mine. I have to have a quarter of, I have a right of a quarter on this bread. And everyone say that, all four start to fight over this and they try to snatch their part what would happen somebody would get more somebody would get less somebody would get nothing the stronger person would have the bigger share the the weaker one might not get any chance to that breed the piece of bread maybe the strongest one would take all of it and other may have a small snippets from it which means that you are depriving others but you think that this is my right i deserved it this is my bread as well as yours that idea brings in injustice, jealousy, arrogance, ill feeling. Rather, this responsibility sense which Sharia gives us is, oh, this is a piece of bread, has four parts to it because we are four people. I do not have right to three quarters of this. It's more bread that I do not have any access to. I shouldn't be touching those three quarters because that's not mine. Mine is only one quarter, so I should be more concerned about, oh, I do not want to take any extra. I should let it 
be taken by others. So I would say, you know what? Oh, you take your bits. I, I only have a quarter. You have three quarters. The other would say the same thing. And then they would say, you know what? Let me just divide. Someone would just initiate and they divide into four equals and everyone would get their own share. This is how you divide and you do not ask about your right. You rather think about your responsibility. This is Sharia way of looking at things. And when you have that, more people would be actually in line with giving, not taking. Because there's more that we do not owe. There's more that we do not deserve. There's more that we actually owe to others. And obviously, if you have misunderstanding, and you do, because you consider yourself to have a lot of right on certain things, you would then misjudge others. You would say, oh, our father is wrong. So the sons are saying what? Our father is loving our younger brothers, and he's wrong. He is in error. So you misjudging others because of wrong understanding of Sharia. You're misjudging others because you didn't understand Sharia law. So you started thinking about your rights. You're actually in error yourself. So we need to be very careful about how we behave. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اُقْتُلُوا يُوسُفَ أَوِتْ رَحُوهُ أَرْضًا يَخْلُ لَكُمْ وَجْهُ أَبِيكُمْ وَتَكُونُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ قَوْمًا صَالِحِينَ they said among themselves, because our father loved Yusuf and Benjamin more than he does uh, ourselves, let's kill Yusuf al -Islam, or throw him out in the land so that the favor of your father may be given to you alone. Mean we will get rid of Yusuf al -Islam. And after that, you will become righteous folk. You just repent and try to be good. Again, they were blinded by their arrogance they didn't even think what are they doing they're plotting to kill the brother and throw him in the bewilderment in the open desert and they're thinking you know what we would just say sorry and we will repent and everything would be fine they are going that far so it was the jealousy that creeps in initially and then once you have jealousy you start justifying everything that you do, even if it's haram, and you know it's haram. The jealousy leads to arrogance, and arrogance and jealousy together would blind people, and they are the ultimate eternal disease. If you look at the first disease of the heart ever to manifest itself in cruelty was jealousy and arrogance. Jealousy and arrogance were the two initial diseases. Who had that? Who had those disease? Before that, that was human being. But before that, Shaitan, Iblis had those ill disease, you know, ills of the heart. He felt jealous about Adam al Islam and he became arrogant when he was quizzed. He was asked, Why are you not listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why you are not bowing down to Adam al Islam? What did he say? Ana khairum min, I am better than him. Because he became arrogant. So jealousy leads you to misjudge. And then ultimately you consider yourself to be better than others. And then you start rejecting the truth. Al-kibru batarul haqqi wa ghamtun nas. This is what Iblis did. And he did a lot of good deed. But it didn't save him. Because he was arrogant. He was jealous. And then Cain did the same thing. To his brother. Abel and Cain's story. So what did he do? He was jealous of his brother. Who's sacrifice was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he became a while I accepted his so he's questioning Allah, Allah's judgment and this is what happened when you become jealous of why Allah give him this her this not me why he she's like this and I'm like that why she's been given this or he's been given this not me this takes you into the idea of oh I'm being deprived of something I didn't get my right I've been mistreated now the billah by my parents, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and na'udhu billah. And ultimately you come out of the fold of Islam. Arrogance takes you out of the fold of Islam. We should be very clear. So what did it do? This jealousy and arrogance led the brothers to commit how many sins? They plotted against their own brother. They lied to their father. What did they say? Oh, send this uh, younger brother of us. We love him. We take him to the park. We just go out and have a bit of fun. We're just going to picnic. They broke the tie of relationship. They severed the tie, tie of relationship. Because if you go against your own brother, you try to kill your brother, 
the brother has the right to be protected by you. So rather than protecting him against enemies, you are killing him. So this is against the, the law of relationship. So you have to maintain the ties of relationship, but rather you're going against it. And you're torturing, torturing an innocent. What did he do? Did he deserve to be killed? What did he do? Was it his fault? Obviously he was the most obedient and nice kid. So everyone would love that kid. And that thereby you know your father loves the son and you are depriving your father of being close to the son who he loves the most. And you're hurting and causing trouble to your father. What could be worse than that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to respect our parents. Allah says, do not associate partners with me and obey and respect your parents. So rather than respecting, you are causing hurt and trouble to your father, who is a prophet. What could be worse than that? This is what happens if you are jealous and arrogant. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ لَا تَقْتُلُوا يُوسُفَ وَأَلْقُوهُ فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبِّ يَلْتَقِطْهُ بَعْضُ سَيَّارَةِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ فَعِلِينَ One of them, among those the brothers said, you do not, don't kill Yusuf alayhi salam. But if you really want to do something, throw him down in the bottom of a well, you'll be picked up by someone, some caravan, some travelers, so at least he'll be out of your sight, he would be away from father's sight, meaning that you would be, in a way, getting what you want. So you don't have to kill. You don't have to kill. So the eldest brother, Robel was his name according to some, or Judas according to some other Mufassirun, uh, uh, tried to save Yusuf al-Islam because he thought at least my brother wouldn't get killed. Let him save him. And this was because Yusuf al-Islam came to him. The younger brothers wouldn't, other, other brothers like after, after Robel or, or Judas, the younger ones, they wouldn't listen to him. Initially, they showed their father that they, you know, carrying Yusuf al-Islam on their piggyback, on their shoulder, one after the other. And once the father was out of sight, they threw him on the ground. Like, Go, you walk on your own. And then he was tired. He came to the oldest one that they are mistreating me. He said, okay, don't worry. I will save you. I will save you. He then started thinking that this younger brother is coming to me. I must try and help him a little bit at least. Then he said that let him come back with us home. And the other said, no, if you are going to be with Yusuf, we're going to kill you first. That is how he had to give this idea. Oh, you know what? Let's throw him in the well. And his, his idea was Allah would save him somehow. But he should have communicated the plan to Allah, uh, to his father, but he couldn't because it was too late now. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مَا لَكَ لَا تَأْمَنَّا عَلَى يُوسُفَ وَإِنَّا لَهُنَا نَاسِحُونَ They came with the plot in their mind. They said, Oh, our father, why do you not trust us with Yusuf al-Islam when we are only in t- in a, a well-wisher? We want good for Yusuf a.s. Now they're lying against, against. And they're also trying to make father feel bad. Oh, we are the brothers. We should be looking after. We should look after. We just love our brother. You don't trust us, do you? So in a way, you're making your father feel bad. So they lied. And then they said, they said to, uh, to dad, أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا يَرْتَعَ وَيَلْعَبْ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ Send him with us tomorrow to enjoy himself and play and verily we will look after him. They're giving him false sense of security. Now we will take responsibility. So in a way they're taking the covenant. They become, they say, entrust Yusuf with us, we will look after him. But they're going to break it. How many signs of hypocrisy? They lied. They made a promise, they broke. They were entrusted with Yusuf al Islam, they didn't maintain it. So, all three signs of hypocrisy are found in those brothers. And this is only because of jealousy, which led them to commit all those sins. And then they, they just tried to make this trap sound good. We're only helping. He would just have fun. It's a nice day. Let's just go out, let him get it stronger. They persuaded to give permission. And Yusuf al Islam allowed them to go. And they suggest that to have some recreation, some fun time, in halal way, within Islamic law, is permissible. One can go for some picnic and parties, but as long as there is no haram committed. Yusuf al-Islam's father, Yaqub al-Islam said, 
قال he said inni la yahzununi an tadhhabu bihi wa akhafu an ya'kulahu adh-dhib wa antum anhu ghafilun he said that truly it saddens me that you would take yusuf al-islam away from me i fear maybe a wolf would devour him while you are careless of him so he's giving them this hint because yusuf al-islam's father yaqub al-islam had a dream he saw that yusuf al-islam is in that at the base of the the mountain initially well he saw that and the 10 wolves are surrounding him yusuf al-islam's father had that dream so he had this cue and he's giving them this hint and yet his reluctance they didn't take any heed they became so reckless and they follow shaitan and the whispers from the shaitan and their nafs and they say oh don't worry we will bring him back we are very strong he said they said qalu la in akalahu adh-dhib wa nahnu usbatun inna idhan la khasirun if a wolf devours him while we were present and we are strong 10 men now we are really going to be losers are you suggesting that we are weak we cannot look after a wolf don't worry about that we will sort him out means what are you trying to say dad have you got any idea we are 10 men and it suggests that yusuf al islam was very young so according to some of asirun he was about 7 year old when they took him that's why they could carry him on their back and also he would have been eaten up by wolf older man adult 12 13 a wolf cannot eat them normally they can run away he was 7 according to some narration so they were giving wrong assurance false assurance and they had pride they didn't even say inshallah we'll look after him they didn't even say inshallah they were the children of a prophet and yet they did not have and they were muslims they did not have that respect but they were so arrogant because they had wrong intention anyway so when you are arrogant and jealous you do not think through things properly you rather have wrong understanding faulty understanding What would you normally say? Don't worry that. We will look after them inshallah ta'ala. Allah will help us. They didn't say any of that. If we do it, don't you worry. We are strong men. And sometimes we do the same, don't we? Sometimes we say, oh, it's easy peasy. I can do it. Oh, no worry. I will, I will be able to sort it out. When you have that sort of feeling, always think to yourself, am I doing it because I'm overly confident? Or am I being arrogant? Should I be doing it like this? Or at least say, inshallah in your heart if you do not mean to be arrogant inshallah and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says falamma dhahabu bi wa ajma'u an yaj'aluhu fi ghayabat al-jub wa awhayna ilayhi latunabbiannahum bi amrihim hadha wa hum la yash'urun so when they took him away the brothers father had to then give up they accepted they had to he had to because if he showed them oh i know you are the ten people you are the wolves i'm concerned about i had a dream they would have become even a graver enemy to and a stone to enemy to yusuf al islam because then they would hate him openly and they say okay if you consider us to be you know bad for our brothers then okay you don't trust us fine they will sort him out means they would become an open enemy at the moment there so yusuf al islam's father yaqub al islam was very wise man he didn't disclose that because if he did they would say okay fine we don't take him now but then they would have another plot something else and they would have perhaps killed him without him knowing it at the moment they are coming to take permission to take him to some picnic but here yaqub al islam showed immense intelligence and wisdom and let it be because he knew that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah ta'ala will save him if if allah wills only allah's will would prevail this was his faith and trust in allah so when they took him away they all agreed to throw him in the bottom of the well and we inspired to yusuf al islam indeed you shall one day inform them of the affair and when they will be unaware of it mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already inspired yusuf al islam about something and although he wasn't a prophet he was prophet at the age of he was given the prophethood at the age of 40 so he wasn't prophet at that time yet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes gives a different insights and with, uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives some 
you know, ilham, inspirations to his pious people, even if they were not prophet, like he did to the mother of Musa alayhi salam, like he gave to uh, Maryam alayhi salam and many others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort people through that. So Allah comforted Yusuf alayhi salam through that. You could imagine how Yusuf alayhi salam must have felt at that point. Oh, Allah is going to save me. Alhamdulillah. He felt very, very much comforted by that. And now he's in the, in the well. So what happened when they threw him? He didn't hit his head against anything. Rather that dry well had a small amount of water right at the bottom. So Yusuf al-Islam nicely fell in that water. But he didn't drown in him in that water. Rather he got a little bit wet but didn't hurt himself. And then obviously he was shocked. So Jibreel alayhi salam, Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel. He came down and he lifted him and set him on the piece of rock there at the bottom of the well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always help those who follow his way. And he had his utmost trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was calmed down by Allah by this you know, inspiration, he didn't moan, he didn't shout. Obviously before that he was crying and he was asking his brothers to help him. But before the brothers were about to throw him in the well, he was clinging on to the you know, small wall at the top of the well. But they took his shirt away and threw him off. And uh, in that, on that shirt, well, they just put some blood, artificial blood, by killing an animal, a lamb of something. And then they just showed the father the shirt saying that, see, there's a the blood of Yusuf alayhi salam. He was killed by a wolf, as you dreaded, because we just ran, we were just doing a bit of competition, and Yusuf was left there to look after the stuff, but unfortunately he couldn't, and he was just eaten up by the wolf. Oh, your fear was bright, actually, we didn't know. And this is how they pretended. So he, Yusuf alayhi salam was patient. He tolerated everything. So they came in the evening to the father saying that at the night time saying, Yeah, father, or oh, 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 our dad, uh, they were crying. They said, They said, yeah, abana, inna They were just crying like, you know, pretend cry. And they said, Oh, our father, we went racing with one another and left Yusuf alayhi salam by our belongings and a wolf devoured him. But we know that you're not going to trust us, would you? Even if we're truthful, you're not going to listen to us. You don't trust us, do you? They're making father feel bad again, despite having all... So how cunning and how bad all those bad ideas come to the minds when we do not follow Allah's way. Shaitan give us all the tricky things and you continue to go in the trap of Shaitan. And many a time we do the same. You become... You, you play innocent. Oh, I'm, I'm, I haven't done seed, you're going to listen to me. Yeah. And then you start crying. All those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the hint, don't follow that way. That is shaitanic way. A truthful person will say, Ya Allah, I have committed a mistake. Ya Allah, forgive me. Oh my father, oh my mother, oh my teacher, forgive me. I would never do that again. Rather than coming up with new ideas to multiply your sin. وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيسِي بِدَمٍ كَذِبٍ قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّرَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَىٰ مَا تَصِفُونَ And they brought his shirt stained with false blood and he said, Father said, Nay, but your own selves have made up a tale. You are just coming up with a wrong story. So for me, patience is most fitting and it is Allah alone whose help can be sought against that which you have asserted. Whatever you're saying, I rather take refuge in Allah's blessings, Allah's mercy, Allah's favor. And this is what happened. He saw the shirt. The shirt had some blood stain on it, but there was no sign of tearing. It was completely intact. There was no marks of teeth. How could you say that the wolf devoured Yusuf when the shirt is completely sound, intact? Can a wolf attack someone and leave the shirt completely clean and nice other than a little bit of blood of Yusuf al-Islam on that. So where is the wound? Where is the mark of the, ho the hole of the clothes or the teeth of the wolf? 
shirt should have shirt should have some signs of that. It's it's not torn at all. See, this is what happens. You become overly confident. You become so ridiculously ignorant about some simple fact that every even child would know, but they couldn't think about that. So another lie, lame excuse. They broke the contract. And another attempt to make father feel guilty. Untone shirt with animal's blood was a completely crazy idea, but they did it. Yusuf al Islam still didn't show. He knew it, but he didn't show. He wanted his children to come back to the truth by repentance, through repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't want him, them, those children to feel completely dejected. He didn't make them feel bad. Although they were, they were trying all, the, all along to make him feel bad, but he didn't. He let, let them be. Okay, well, he said, fine. Let them come to their senses. Once they're over with this, they would think they would get better. He understood the plot and he understood their lies. Yet, he said, I would remain patient. I would trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He waited at the right time to rectify the affair of the children rather than shunning them. وَجَاءَ السَّيَّارَةُ فَأَرْسَلُوا وَارِدَهُ فَأَدْلَى دَلْوَةُ قَالَ يَا بُشْرَى هَذَا غُلَامُ وَأَسَرُّهُ بِضَاعَةُ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ And there came a caravan of travelers. They sent their water drawer and they, the men who let it down, they let the, the, he let the bucket down and he said, when Yusuf al-Islam saw that, he thought this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sat in that big bucket and when he was lifted out, he, the men said, what a good news, here's a boy. So they hid him as a merchandise and or merchandise, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything they were doing. So they were very happy with that thing. And then they realized, you know what, we can sell it. Although they were there for water, but they got a better thing. They thought it would be a slave, we sell him. So he spent three, three days, not years, <laughs> Three days in the cave. Three days in the cave. In the in the in in the well, he spent three days. There's a mistake there. Let me correct it here so that you can. So it was only three days worth of spent time spent in the in the wave, in the well, in the well. Okay, I'm tired now. He spent three days in that well. The caravan from Syria, they lost their track and they came around that area. They found this well. They were happy. They wanted to get some water out. Rather, they got Yusuf alayhi salam. And according to some narration, they hid those few men. They hid Yusuf alayhi salam because they wanted to sell him. And they were like, you know, if everyone found out, everyone in the caravan would want a share in that, you know, money. So rather than that, just keep it to ourselves. وشروه بثمن بخس دراهم معدودة وكانوا فيه من الزاهدين and they sold him for a low price for a few dirhams only few silver coins and they were of those who regarded him insignificant they did not consider Yusuf al Islam to be worthy why because they just wanted to get rid of him so according to some narration it was the brothers what happened the the Judas or the Robel the the oldest one he used to come on a daily basis for those three days and he would bring some food and he would just quietly give it to Yusuf alayhi salam so that he wanted his, him to live there and when he found the, the third day that the caravan is coming and then taking Yusuf alayhi salam out he just went back and brought his brother and the brother oh this is our slave why you have taken him and they, the men then got oh, okay if it, it's your slave before they charge us with stealing they said oh would you rather sell him so brother said oh yeah you can have him you can have him for 40 dirham according to some narration they sold him for 20 dirhams only 20 dirhams, which is a very small amount for a slave in those days. But he was sold for only 20 dirhams, according to some narration, 40 dirhams, but whatever. So they all had like 2 dirhams each, 10 brothers, if they sold for 20 dirhams. And they were happy because they were not after money. They were just keen to get rid of Yusuf al-Islam so that they can be with their father all by themselves. That was their jealousy. So this is what happened. The arrogance, the jealousy took him, took them all the way to even sell their brother. Yes, so this was, would happen if we do not be careful and attentive. So.
there are many blessings and many benefits to learn from this and change our affair. We all need to look at our own lives. Do we do any of that? Do we become arrogant at times? Do we become jealous at times? Do we start making fables and, and, and false stories in order to save ourselves from something? Make sure that we do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Rather, we follow the way of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us tawfiq. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ali al-muslimina fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.